Welcome back, everyone, to It's What's in the Fridge. It's your boys, and we got a special guest. Armenian masterpiece. Whoa, 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 the disrespect. <laughs> Albanian, bro. Ekuche Z. I'm a sheep dog. He's Armenian. Bro. They are all the I'm, same. I'm whipping the chain okay. out. I'm no, real talk, though. Wait, if people no, you disrespected my culture. <laughs> the, the Islam chain and the Albania chain's coming out. Ah, for it's, the it's disrespect, out. It's dude. out. Okay, but real talk, though. What? So like when someone's like, oh, he's Mexican for me. It's like, that's kind of offensive, bro. Like you don't even know me like that. <laughs> I have a Puerto Rican flag hanging in my room, man. It's like no offense. I have a Mexican shirt. Shout out to the soccer team. They got great colors. And that love for Mexicans, you feel me? You you Mexican love Islander. <laughs> the most, most of the South is like, but oh, you're true. Colombian? Oh, you're Southern Mexican. <laughs> that's all but you are. When you go like under the shell of Hispanic people, it's like, yeah. oh, he's just Mexican. Yeah. Is that common for you? Um, or is sort like, of, because of the Balkans, everyone's like, oh, you're a Serb? I'm like, how dare you disrespect mm. me like that? You call me a Serb, really? Um, no, but, um, I mean, I find it more annoying when it comes to Islamic culture than, like, my actual Albanian heritage, because a lot of people think, because you're Islamic, oh, you know Arabic, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, don't get me wrong, I know three languages, but <laughs> Arabic's way too tough, bro. I have the Quran in Albanian and English, all right? Leave me alone. Okay, wait, so, wait, wait, wait. He's just saying, you know, three language on the spot before we start. Okay, this is what's in the fridge. It's a weird show. We talk about food. We explore his fridge. Whoever's the guest is, we take deep dives in the fridge and obviously have random conversations. And that's what we're doing here. But you said you speak three languages. Yes. What are the three? And then um, you got to say at least two words in no, general. No, no. So I speak English, Albanian, Macedonian. Okay. Saifol, English. Uh, wait, I want to make sure I say this right. Saifol, English, sheep. Ma, uh, Macedoni and then Anfol, uh, English, Albanski, Macedonski. Wow, hey, <laughs> I, I don't know what you just said. I'm assuming you said, <laughs> and my, my, my Macedonian's not the best. I've learned it from going to Europe a few times. So if I butchered it, please call me out. I do appreciate call it. Call them out, guys. Call like, them out. My, my, my Macedonian's like uh, elementary, my Albanian's like conversational, and my okay. American's like flawless. Hey, man, being my trilingual American. is a crazy You see, I'm waiting to see. American. I wanted to see if you were Yikes. listening. I was testing you. Listen, bro, I'm how a host. dare you not call I'm me out? I'm a host and a producer. I'm trying to like find things. All right, so hey, we're going to jump into that. Man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, guys, uh, this is season one. I want to call. We we originally did this show in a little class called Podcast Production. That show already was behind the ones and twos. Shout out to the homie Lizbeth. She was a killer, absolute stallion, perhaps. Um, no, no, shout out to her. But we did that. There was no video though, so that's going to be season zero. It's like a pilot season. You know? Yeah, it's like your testers. You know. Yeah, yeah. So and we'll probably have to get Lizbeth on. At some point. I, I just want to say, podcast production has produced numerous shows out of it that have gone, like, you know, mainstream on their own. Ooh. You know? What shows? Because, okay, guys. I know I had a, had to flex on him with, with an insult earlier, but we do have a special guest. It's Artie Amini, and he is from the Match Week Entertainment Group. I don't know what it's actually called uh, these Ma days. Match Week Entertainment, and if you're looking for the official business title, it's Match Week LLC. LLC. He's official, guys. So yeah. uh, if you're interested, on the weekends, what time are your streams? Let them know real quick. Uh, the streams are during the Premier League games, and we should have new episodes coming out soon. Um, I have like a whole 20-episode catalog that I'm dropping because we were a radio show for a little while, and uh, you know how it is pulling audio. Sometimes you're... You know, your Audacity files don't really work up well, mm -hmm. and it sounds weird. So it took a while for me to compile all the original audio, make it sound decent, and have it ready to release. So I have 20 episodes that are going to be dropping from the months leading from December all the way up to May. And we'll be starting back up within the next couple of weeks nice. for September. So if you're into soccer, check them out, man. They're doing some great stuff with the Match Week people, but... We do have some important things. Enough about the audio yeah, nerd no, stuff. Food. Like, oh God, food. no one cares I'm here for the food. about the behind the scenes stuff. People are here for some food, man. I'm a we thick boy for a reason. Dude. I love my food. Come hey, on, bro. I, does it count if I'm a former thick boy? You know, I worked <laughs> off a couple of the LBs. You know, your boy looking fresh these days. Hey, last you night were there, you were there. Got out of work, bro. Ran three miles. Three miles, then did chest day. So we built different, son. We built, built different. All right, enough about me. We got a fridge to explore. So we going to explore your actual fridge before we get to your just most ridiculous fridge oh, yeah, I've so ever seen I, in my life. Yeah, they got yeah, dead yeah, bodies it, and shit, bro. It's wild. Yeah, it's absolutely wild. It, like, I don't think you understand. This isn't just like my <laughs> family. Like, typical Albanian culture, this is how it is. Like, okay. any Albanian household you go to, there's numerous places to store 
assorted So no one's going hungry is what I'm hearing. No one okay. goes hungry. If anything, right. we're too large. <laughs> I think that's the problem. All right, though. So my thing is, I love sauces, bro. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're starting. We're starting with the door in your fridge. We got sauces for days, bro. Yes. We got sriracha. We got hot sauces. Real quick, though. <laughs> When it comes to hot sauces, yes. what's your favorite one? Because I see Red Hot, so, Sriracha, look, P.F. Chang's is in some there. Some of that Louisiana. stuff is not mine. Ooh. I'll tell you right now. The one on the bottom right, the Catalina, is mine. Okay. The the gochujang sauce, the P.F. Chang's, is mine. But then this one, Ooh. I make myself. It's a mango habanero. All right, tell me the mango habanero. Let's hear it. Mango habanero, bro, it, it's, it's quite easy. You just use the dried mangoes. You reduce them. Drop a little bit of mango sauce in it. And you use a base to make it like a glazy teriyaki type of like crushed red pepper, uh, paprika. You'd use buffalo sauce, but nothing that's too overtly salty because it cuts the sweetness. And that way you have that acidity and that umami flavor, but still some sweet. Okay, so you're going for some Asian flair with that sauce. Yes, okay. sort of. Because yeah. I was initially thinking it'd be like cilantro, onions, peppers, and all that stuff, but... It's a little different with you. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I'm a big spice guy. I love spice. Really? See, My grandfather's okay. worse than me. He'll have like straight up like long hots that he'll just grow and just eat straight up. Is that an Albanian thing too? Like y'all just be eating spicy things? That's villager thing. So there's, oh. there's, so there's Albanians and there's villager Albanians. It's different. It's different. Shout out to the villager Albanians. <laughs> just destroying their guts, bro. I can't do that crazy spice. Like even, you know, I, we talked about wings in a private conversation a couple days ago. But I like the Asian zing sauce from uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. He thinks it's too salty. Everybody. No, no. I, I don't think just the Asian zing. I think all of Buffalo oh, Wild Wings bad, is bad. just too salty. It's like they don't know how to use like proper flavors. It's too manufactured. Here's my thing, though. Well, I'm just going to pretend that didn't happen because I'm, I'm going to walk out of the set. But My set? <laughs> I'm locked the door. Try to get out of here. Walk like, out of the set. I am in charge here, guys. Um, but my thing about sauces, right, especially when it's spicy ones, is I have such a limitation. Yeah. And I can't handle certain amounts of spice. So what is your range? Can you go for the absolute spiciest or you kind of mild guy? Absolute. I'd say I'm in between like um like a I'm like the in between of like a ghost pepper and like above like a jalapeno, if you know what I'm saying. Like okay. I don't I don't want like habaneros for days, but I like the spice just to see how well you can create flavor in the spice and not just like, oh, I want to burn your mouth off, you know? Gotcha. Okay. All right. So up next, though, we got covered through some sauces, some Italian dressing. You know, I, I rock with Italian dressing. But I see some jams in here. What are you using those jams for? Just peanut butter and stuff? No. So uh, I don't know if you forgot, but I'm severely allergic to peanuts and jams. <laughs> it's so I'm a great friend, guys. <laughs> a great friend. really is. Um, no, actually, that's for my mother. Uh, she likes to have it with her peanut butter and jelly oh, and, and she likes just for like just usual like uh you know like uh multi-grain bread she likes to spread a little bit because a lot of those stuff we get shipped from overseas or we have the albanian markets oh, here okay so it's not like your basic like uh was it smuckers? smuckers no like it's like actual like good quality jam. Cool. all right yeah so my thing is okay so i imagine it's morning right breakfast time your mom's chilling you're chilling you have a little coffee or something do you ever just look at you as she's like spreading her peanut butter? It's like, you mess up one time. No, well, the thing I, is, is that like... I can end your whole life right now. <laughs> <laughs> my mother my mother could uh, end my life in many different ways. Not just through peanut butter. This is true. That's just the more sadistic way of doing Love it. Love your mothers, everybody. Exactly. Uh, no, uh, it's just with her, uh, It's it, it ranges. So she'll have, go from like her... So she grew up in Patterson, right? So Oh, okay. She, was, she grew up in Albania, moved to Patterson around like eight, nine years old. Um, and she grew up microwaving, like, just an egg. So you throw it on, like, a paper plate, mm -hmm. throw the egg on, put a little salt and pepper, microwave it, eat it. Seems about right. And that's her quick go-to breakfast of, like, she wants something. She still does that to this day? Well, be, I mean, my mother's disabled, so she likes to eat something quick and go okay. lay down, so. Um, that's Yeah, it's fair. But, like, a lot of that stuff, it's, like, she'll buy from, like, my brother, even though he's moved out. <laughs> Expect him <laughs> to come over and make breakfast. Or, yes, like, my dad. Sir. My dad who works out of state, when he comes home, the stuff's there for him, too. So it's a mixture of stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. All right. So now I see half and half. You are a coffee guy. You made your coffee in your K-cup, which we'll talk about that a little <laughs> later. I got my thoughts on that. But how do you normally take your coffee? My coffee, black. Um, and if I want some sweetness, I'll either add, like, the, the zero sugar um, syrups, or I'll have, like, the zero sugar powder creamer. Mm -hmm. or I'll have maybe very, very once in a while, I'll put a Splenda. Here's my thing, man. You know, we're going to talk about it now. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, you said you like your coffee black? That half and half You're is lying, not for me. You're lying, bro. You're lying. 
Well, in here, what you saw was the zero calorie um, creamer. That's it for here because I don't like the coffee I bring. That coffee is just coffee for guests. I'm very picky with oh, coffee. Damn. Usually, I drink I drink espressos only. I usually don't have coffee. See, oh. you understand? I'm a man on a budget. You think I can afford an espresso machine in this place? Not even that. That that's not my concern, man. Is like. I love coffee, right? All types mm-hmm. of coffee. I think Central American, South American, Caribbean coffees have the best type of beans. As someone that worked at Starbucks for a little bit, I know my bean history, guys. <laughs> um, but but truthfully, I think coffee needs some type of milk product to really get the entire flavor. I think okay. when you're having black, it's almost like you're punishing yourself. Well, that's if you have good coffee. So like in my house, <laughs> no, genuinely in my house, we like get beans imported from Europe. We grind them down ourselves. Or if you see, if you go back to the picture over here, you see a bottle of lemon juice and we have that or even the half and half is for when guests come over and they want half and half or mm-hmm. roast, whatever. But you'll see behind it a bottle of lemon juice for when we make Turkish coffee because in my house we make it's with lemon juice. Yeah, a lot of people really? like lemon juice in it. 100%. That's I've like, never tried it. Cuz supposedly it cuts the bitterness. And it makes the, See, that the, makes a little sense because sometimes when you have really good coffee, though, it is really bitter. Yeah, and then so like because the way how like it's made, you have like this. The, it's like basically this powder for it. You cook it in like something like this, like small. It has like a little handle, and you're constantly mixing it and like making a uh, sludge sort of. Okay, and then it comes out like a coffee. Gotcha. And a lot of people because it's so thick and rich of just those pure beans, they'll put lemon juice in it. And there's no sugar when you put the lemon juice. No, in? no, 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 no sugar, no nothing. You either okay. have it with lemon juice or you eat it, or you drink it straight because then it's just it, then it's not Turkish coffee. You're trying to make it like okay. American coffee. No, so for me, I I love um, Cuban coffees like uh, cafecitos. They're like little oh, tiny shots those. of those espressos. Are good. Those are good. Those are fire, and those are typically depending on where you go. Some of them have like milk, like very small amounts of milk foam into it. Or it's just a ton of sugar that they really just Dude, started stirring. Dude, I'm convinced the best coffee is outside the U.S. You, you've never had good coffee. Okay, very quick. Okay. You know how when you think of New York, you sometimes like in movies and stuff, everyone's getting coffee and you think, yeah. oh, that's cool. We love New York's coffee. No. <laughs> New York's coffee <laughs> fucking sucks. It's it is the ass. worst coffee ever, bro. They, they try to claim pizza, bagels, and coffee. No, all three are garbage. All three all are garbage. trash, bro. All three are garbage. Terrible. And I've been to so many places and so like obscure places where you think, oh, this is going to have great coffee. Dude, I take first sip. It's so bad. I can never finish you this, it. The best coffee you will have is in Italy or Albania. I'm telling you right now. Haven't been to Italy. Haven't been to Albania. But I've been to Miami, and I'll tell you what, they might have the best coffee in oh, the yeah, United they, States. Oh, they, because they definitely get those fresh Colombian beans, bro. There's no shot. No, from Cuba and shit, like, bro. Even oh, yeah, Puerto Rican right. coffee, yeah. too. I, well, oof. I think that's me being unfair, because I haven't tried true South American coffee. Ah, so you gotta so, try it. I, I'm a little biased. Try. I'm definitely, Well, yeah, you whatever. gotta try true <laughs> European coffee, either. So I'm wearing a university <laughs> mic, and there's no bias here at all, guys. No bias. Uh, all right, so we got some other... Typical things inside of, uh, of your sauce You're part right out here. On the on the on the cutting piece of thing I eat there, the cottage cheese. Co- All right, cottage cheese. You actually okay? Listen, really? listen, listen, listen. A bowl of cottage cheese with honey and protein powder. You mix it, dude. I'm telling you, it is so. <laughs> it's so filled with protein. It's really good for the cut, especially me because I'm trying to lose weight because I love my girlfriend, but I've gained a lot of weight since I started dating her. Um, it's a guarantee. Anytime it's a guarantee. You get a girl, bro, it's, it's comfy pounds. Happen. Comfy pounds, guys. You got to really got to fix it. Catch it. Um, <laughs> no, so I, I'm, I'm trying to get back into my grind and actually working out, cause especially because I coach soccer for a living. <laughs> because I can't, I, back, I, 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 I can't get a sports communications job right now, so coaching Stop is the thing right now. <laughs> Somebody please hire me for one. Please, please, hire us both. I'm begging you. Hire us both. We'll help you. No, but... um. And, like, I, I, I do see the looks from some of the parents, like, oh, like, this guy thinks he can coach my daughter, you know? Because mm-hmm. it's not like American football where you have, like, those bigger guys who can get away yeah. with, like, being the coach. Like, they expect you to be someone who's just recently stopped playing and still fit as a fiddle while still being a coach. Oh, yeah, because that makes sense, everyone. <laughs> no, you have to be it, shredded. You I have mean, to be shredded. Yeah, it's just you have to have a six-pack, eight-pack. Well, then when you, when you see people. Fernando Torres, a dude who put on – I don't know. You know who he is, right? He was like a, a Spanish striker, played uh-huh. for Chelsea, Liverpool, Atletico Madrid. Guy went from being like – not scrawny, but like a somewhat built like striker. Bulked up, like a bodybuilder size, <laughs> puffed up. Up, dude. Is that is that your journey? Is that what we're gonna see in the next like couple years here? No, I, I just uh, wanna okay. be lean. All That's right. the problem. I've always been uh, thick, bro. I want to be lean for lean. once. Okay. I've always okay. been thick. I want to be lean. It's you know my thing is this. So obviously, as a former thick boy, I like to wear that proudly, you know, because you know it builds character as you grow up. You know, yeah. You, like some people, they, they're just born skinny, have six packs. They got no character, bro. Exactly. I, I'm out here trying to thrive out here. 
burn off the pounds. So I know the struggle. Mm-hmm. And my my things, and obviously a bunch of people like rice cakes and shit. And I always thought, like, everyone's like, you have to do cottage cheese. It's mm-hmm. great. It's going to get your protein. You're going to be feeling full from it. And then every time I, like, even attempt to eat cottage cheese, I'd rather just throw up. And I think it's purely textural. Like, I hate the texture. Well, that's why. So what I do, actually, so if I want to make a lot of macro-friendly meals, instead of using heavy cream and shit like that, I'll blend up the cottage cheese and emulsify it with a little bit of olive oil. So that way, instead of using, like, a heavy cream or milk or something that has a lot of calories and fats, use the cottage cheese, you mix it in with your marinara, and you can make a macro-friendly, like, vodka sauce. Okay. My thing, when it comes to, because they're very similar, right? Mm -hmm. I think Greek yogurt for me. That's been my diet hack. Greek yogurt. Oikos, Oikos, um, Oikos triple zero, right? That is, like, my... So, listen to this. You go to Costco. You get, like, a tub of, like, no, no flavor Greek yogurt. What you do is you do Greek yogurt, buffalo sauce. Buffalo sauce. You marinate it with your chicken. Okay. Cook it on the grill. It'll make it fire. Difference. I've actually used Greek yogurt once with like my chicken before. Some it's of the insane. craziest flavor yeah. I've ever had. Hundred ten percent. Top tier. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we're only just on my shelf. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a only on one hey, shelf. Season premiere. Season premiere. <laughs> former producer here. Even like a five part yes, series sir. into our Let's go. <laughs> No, nah, but uh, truthfully, it's a debut episode. It's something special. We don't know yeah. how long these episodes are going to be in the future. You never know. It depends on the guest. So if you ever see a guest that's on for three minutes, I fucking hated their guts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we'll go to the drawers here. Big veggie guy. And obviously, you're cutting now. So, you know, veggie's going to be important to the diet. <laughs> not we see, not Come on, guys. Come on. I'm you, sorry. You hate veggies, bro? I, I, I love my spinach, my cauliflower, and my Brussels sprouts. That's it? That is it. But we got squash in here, bro. That's not for me. You oh, don't no, like no, squash? I do like my zoodles. So, like, my zucchini squash noodles, I will make them. Nah, nah, I've been on a freaking zucchini squash rundown for my life. I am nonstop, bro. Anytime I'm at the grocery store, I'm buying three squashes. I only make Green, zoodles. yellow. It could be brown. It could be rotting. I'm eating the damn squash. It's only for zoodles. Nothing else. Really? Not yeah. even just grilled? No. Nope. This is such a great texture, too. They're crunchy. They leave you like just. I ate my vegetables today. You, there's a reason why I'm fat. I hope you know this. There's a reason why I'm fat. Like, I, damn. Like, I'm being straightforward. You know what's crazy? There's so many peppers in here. I see some apples. The peppers, in here. yes, 100%. That's and like, and yeah. maybe some tomatoes, snap peas in, inside his drawers. And you pretty much are just saying, none of that's for me. My mother and my father, and then my brother when he randomly decides to stop by. Like, <sighs> that's crazy. And then it's such a, like, a high quality picture here, too. Some celery. You rock with celery, though? Like when you're eating when you're eating wings, right? For me, you kind of need the chaser. So sometimes it can be the fry, a fried pickle, but I think a vegetable. Steak I like is the celery chaser. as a topping for things. What are you putting celery on? No, so like if you have a buffalo chicken pizza, put celery on it. On a pizza? I'm telling you. I don't know, guys. After it's Artie cooked, says he's a food guy, bro. No, no, he not, says not while it's cooking. You have a buffalo chicken pizza. Mm-hmm. You sprinkle it with diced celery. Yeah. So, you know, it makes sense because the whole wing flavor that exactly, you're kind of getting yeah. there. So, I, I understand that, it. Yeah. It's just very jarring to hear someone put in My thing is, is pizza. that uh, green onions. Green onions? Because I hate onions. So, yellow and red onions, I hate. But green onions, dude, I'm telling you, the scallions are do wonders. All right. So, we don't talk about it. I was going to save it, but we don't talk. You mentioned it, bro. So how, how you hate onions? Now I get texture. It. It's texture. It's, it's purely texture? just texture. I hate texture. really when it's cooked, when it's uncooked. The smell. I don't like onions. Don't get me wrong. When I'm when I'm making my own like homemade marinara and stuff, yeah. I will like you know I'll dice it up. I will you know make sure it's sautéed and cooked into it. And then when I emulsify it, it's cooked down to like the micro fibers. Okay. Like, there's no actual onion chunks. I use it for my onions? cooking, but I will not have a Philly cheesesteak and have a slap of caramelized onions. Nah, but caramelized, sweet onions, raw onions. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm going to Five Guys, bro, and they're like, what do you want? Give me some fucking onions, bro. Give nah, me all the onions. Nah, nah, Put it on there. Nah, nah, Boom. Nah, eating that nah, shit. Nah. Hell yeah, bro. Damn it, man. Ugh, that's brutal. That's sad stuff. We're we going to move on here, though. Let's see what else we got. Okay. So we're in, like, the main... You want me to explain to see, you what these are? Because I feel like you don't of know. the fridge. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you from the top shelf. I know what's going on here, right? I'm gonna explore that. Then from the bottom house, I don't know what I'm. I'm seeing <laughs> just sticks of meat, and I love. I love meat, guys. Yeah. I love meat all the time. Take yeah, it as yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we do have some eggs. 
But you have a ton of fucking eggs, so I'm guessing you get so, it from Costco or something. Yeah, we get it from Costco, and again, the eggs aren't for me because I'm allergic to egg whites. <laughs> what is in this fridge for you, bro? You just eating nothing in this fridge? Oh, rice, chicken, meats. <laughs> the other fridges are genuinely for me, like no cap. Like they're okay. literally built for me when I bring home. Um, but to just sort of explain it, the shelf you're looking at, I think that's like a tzatziki. Sour Love cream, tzatziki. there's butter behind it. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it's sort of like your typical everyday things and the eggs. Now, the two drawers you're curious about. Yes, sir. We have, um, it's like a lobster. I like having lobster once in a while. Like, as oh. like, so like, I, it okay. helps it helps my fish intake because I like eating fish twice a week. So I'll have salmon or lobster or whatever. Is there a reason for it? Just like you love fish. No, I love I love fish, but also it's good balance for your diet because it's a great way to get your iron and your okay. minerals up cool. and stuff. And it's also a way cleaner protein to eat calorie wise. Like calorie per piece of like per gram of protein is absolutely mental when it comes to fish. Yeah. So and then also the two sticks of meat. I'm gonna explain what they are. <laughs> Big old sticks of meat. It's guys. Albanian chicken like salami. Um, and the okay. way how it's made, it's made from a can of chicken spread called pashtet. And the pashtet is like leftover liver, kidneys, oh. like all the all dark the left- meats. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they like sort of blend and emulsify and make it into a chicken spread. And that is sort of like the salami version of that. So it's like a hard meat though, right? Yeah, or it's a hard meat. You can slice it, eat it, use it for salami, make a sandwich. Okay. And I like that because it's really high, rich in proteins, and it has those minerals and stuff, and vitamins and everything from having the kidneys and the livers and stuff. But it doesn't t- it doesn't have that kidney taste because I know a lot of people will not like it because it has such a weird, earthy, raw taste to it. Whereas if it's like prepped and made properly and seasoned, like that has a lot of sodium, so I am careful with it. Yeah. But it has like the spices like vegeta and paprika and all this kind of stuff. So, so is it similar to liverwurst or is it similar to like? Hard salami. It's similar to hard salami. Okay. It's not like a liverwurst. I hate liverwurst. Liverwurst? No. Listen, bro. I slice meat sometimes because, you know, that's part of the hustle when you graduate college. Exactly. I work at a Walmart and I work at Sirius XM. It doesn't make any sense. Sometimes when people ask me, like, I'm in a Zoom meeting, right? <laughs> when you freeze it like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. Like... It's crazy, bro. I'm in a Zoom meeting. Some producers, big time hosts. I'm like, hey, guys, just got in um, from, from my other job. They're like, where you work, bro? And I got to be honest because I can't just lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie in this situation. They're like, you're going you're gonna, to like either laugh at it or just like, you're hey, bro, you're going to be surprised by this. I work at a fucking Walmart as well. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting to see the responses when they hear that because, that, hey, that's the real life struggle. And yeah. I mean, it's about transparency here. We're honest people. Okay. 100%. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> no, you were, um... Uh, oh, slice of meat. Yeah, slice so when people meat. come with liverwurst, bro, it's always the old people, like, 75, yes. 80 years old, because that's probably what they grew up eating. And then sometimes when I'm slicing meat, I'm like, oh, I would try that. I look at liverwurst, and I want to vomit. Every yeah. Time. It's such a it's gross not good. texture. It's not good. It smells terrible, and it just looks so mutated. Yeah. Like, it does not belong in somebody's body. No. It's ridiculous. But that's my thoughts. So thankfully, it's not like a liverwurst. It's more like a salami. Um, so when you are making this, you said you put it in sandwiches, right? Yes. Yeah, is there so ever a time where you cook it and put it in like a soup or um, something? I think the closest thing to cooking it is if you cook it on a on a pan like you do with Spam. Okay. I think – actually, no. I think that's a closer comparison. It's more of like a Spam. Oh. Yeah, I, a, I rock a, the Spam, A, a Spam slash uh, salami. Cool. I think that's like sort of the closest comparison. You know what it also could be like is um, there's a Dominican sausage that I think it, this is probably the closest that it's going to be to this maybe. Okay. Uh, because there's a Puerto Rican one that's very hard, but there's this – like the Dominican one is kind of mm-hmm. soft, but it is almost kind of like the same texture of a Spam. Yeah. So I think maybe that's what that's I would very, probably very recommend to it. Closer. And then oftentimes for Dominicans is that they will have that for breakfast and then mm-hmm. serve with everything else. So is this typically any time of the day or just breakfast? Me, it's a fair game for anything. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, okay. late night snack. Cool. Fair game. The big thing that I think, I don't know if I have enough pictures of because we're running low on, is cheese. Cheese? To Albanians. You're a cheese guy, huh? They, I'll, I like my cheeses, but the culture loves cheeses in general. We have different kinds. So it's like Diaf. Where it's like a feta cheese type thing, but it's made differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's kachkaval, where it's like a harder cheese. And it's um, like bricks of cheese, but they're made way differently from different milks and stuff like that. Like goat's milk and things like that. Um, and it's really interesting because when you go to like Albania, for example, 
not a lot of places have like mozzarella. So when you're having a pizza, you're having like a cacciaval pizza or you're having like a cacciaval okay. burger. And those are similar to mozzarella or not? Um, it's like a, it's not as, um, it doesn't have as much moisture as I say a mozzarella would have. It's a bit okay. of a drier cheese. So do they melt the same? Like, is it very stretchable when, when it's cooked? Yeah, or it's just okay. the textures are different. That's the only way I can explain okay. it, really. Yeah. I didn't realize but that it's just as good. I might, personally, for me, I think it's almost as good, but mozzarella just has that nice fluffiness to it. Mm. Okay, yeah. my, my question is this. Because sometimes when people talk about cheeses and stuff, American cheese be getting just roasted all the time. Look, American cheese is crucial for a Philly. Mm-hmm. And for grilled cheese, you can't tell me otherwise. Yeah, you, I don't you really need... buy grilled cheeses, but in general, I would agree no, with you. No, yeah, because like, because it's like the way how it gets so malleable and like gooey. For grilled cheese, you need that, so you really only need like one slice of American and mix it in with a sharp cheddar and a, mu- yeah. and a monster cheese, and you're perfect. I think the thing about American cheese is like people have to stop looking at it as a cheese, right? It's an enhancer of everything. I think. Yeah, but really, so you make your own American cheese at home. Nobody's got time for that, bro. No, but, we got but, the craft but, singles no, but, on no, lock, no, bro. But, 20 of them well, for like 99 but point, cents? But the point I'm trying to make is not as like chemically induced as everyone makes it out to be. Yeah. All you really just need is a, is a small tab of like gelatin. You spread it out on a tray and let it cool and you literally have American cheese when you make your own cheese. Hey, bro. You ever need to make cheese, Artie's your guy to hook you up on how to make cheese. Mm-hmm. So we have some other things. We're looking at the rest of this fridge right here. I see some multi-grain bread. And my thing about yeah. breads, right? Puerto Ricans love bread, especially fresh bread. Mm -hmm. But more specifically, sandwich bread is interesting to me. Because especially when you're on a cutting routine, you're trying not to take that many calories Mm -hmm. in. Bread is a killer, bro, because I love freaking bread. But multigrain, I think, is an exception. Because I think the problem with breads and pastas and all this kind of stuff, people don't know the difference between a simple carb and a complex carb. Mm -hmm. A simple carb is good for your body. It's like basic carbohydrates you get from fruits and vegetables and grains that are good for you. The problem is when you have complex carbs, like your white breads and your, I hate to say it, my, my potato bread, bro. I love bread hitting, I love bro. a potato bread for a sandwich or a potato bun for my burger, bro. Or burgers, bro, that's the only, the only way you should have it. Hell yeah. Get, get the brioche out of here. Get the sesame mm, out of here, bro. It. Get me a potato bun. Potato buns. bread, a oh. thousand percent for a burger. Agreed. Ten times Agreed. out of ten. hundred ten percent. But... When it comes to cutting, you need that multi-grain bread because you need the grains, you need the minerals and all that kind of stuff. And when your body, when it comes to simple carbs, it digests it much easier and it takes the proper nutrients it needs. Whereas when it comes to complex carbs, the reason why your body struggles with it and just stores as fat right away is it can't break it down because it's so complicated with all the sugars and the Mm -hmm. glucose and everything that's in it. So my thing about multi-grain bread though. It's like when you look at the labels, though, it's so many calories, especially if you're someone that's strictly looking at calories, right? Because I know a lot of people do that. Yeah. So that's why you see but it, it, and it, you go into the stores and you constantly see the cutting breads, right? Where it's yeah. 40 calories a yeah. slice or something. And I be doing the 40 calorie bread, bro. I'm not going to lie. That's why you you're you sort of like pick your poisons of when you have it. So if you're having fish, for example, something that's very low in calorie and high in protein, you can get away with having your multigrain bread then. Yeah, exactly. So it's like it's all about a proper balance of mm-hmm. when you're eating stuff at the right times. That's really the big thing. Because I even again I explain it to my players when it comes to dieting and nutrition, I tell them don't starve yourselves. Like just make sure everything's in proper portions and you mix and match with a proper amount of things. Like if you're gonna have a chickpea or a whole wheat pasta, don't have it with something that's so high in calories for protein like a steak. Or a chicken, have mm-hmm. it with like a fish or something that sort of can take down that calorie count for you if you're so stressed about calories. For sure, bro. Calories are crazy. And very quickly before we go back into the, like, your fridge right here, I was reading this article the other day because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes I'd be reading articles because I got another show. Check it out on my YouTube channel, the program, all your Boom. news and crazy stuff going on. Um, but there was this headline where Heidi Klum, and for those who for some reason don't know who Heidi Klum is, and I, I would probably wonder. Sort of. Yeah. I, Sort of better off. Yeah. Sort of. Just, sort of. I mean, my thing is sometimes when I read headlines and I really go into articles, I question, like, why do I know this person? Yeah. And I sat there and I was like, why did I just click on an article about Heidi Klum? Like, does anyone really need to know? But I thought it was interesting in the sense that she was talking about her diet and apparently she only eats 900 calories a day. I don't know That's how bull. that is That's bull. physically That's possible. Bull. That's such It's bull, not bro. possible, bro. I don't care how much protein you're getting from these 900 calories or how many vitamins, minerals, whatever. 900 calories, there's no chance you're it's actually like, it's like these people, surviving. It's like those people who try to pitch those vegan diets, but realistically, 
they're only eating 900 calories and it's not enough nutrients. Like I, I call, I call bull on that. Yeah, 100. That's actually starving. Like don't get me wrong, you can be like, like I, I use vegan as an example. You can do that and eat it properly, but these 900 calorie diets are basically non-existent. Absurd. They're not real. All right. So another thing I see here, and I respect this so much, is garlic inside a little container here. It's a minced garlic. Minced garlic. And I have it sitting in a little bit of olive oil. Mm -hmm. I've been contemplating oh. to do an olive oil infused with garlic and crushed red pepper. Ooh. So let it be like a bottle of olive oil, right? Mm -hmm. But sort of let it like marinate with the garlic and the crushed red pepper. Because then cooking with it... Like, that's where I accept my calories. I accept my calories. Just in oils. <laughs> just in olive oil. Like, flavored olive oil. Cause God, I, I love the oil, Because, like, avocado oil, I think, is stupid. Like, all the other ones are, like, weird. It's, like, pick your poison. I always say that. Make sure you use it in the right ways to make good meals for yourself. That's valid. That's valid. Hey, um, I forget where. I think Starbucks is the place. And we'll talk about your Starbucks addiction in a second. Uh, but they're the ones that are putting olive oil inside their coffee. Which I thought was a little weird. I think it's, it's a That's weird. doing too much, bro. But apparently some people actually be doing that. Yeah. On purpose. And I get they they like it for the extra protein or whatever. But it's like, I don't... I, I, olive oil in yeah, my coffee, how do, how do you get protein from olive oil? I that's how, that's that. what they're saying. I don't know yeah, what that but, means, though. You know? Some like, stupid like, micronutrient uh -huh. type thing. I think it's just one of those weird trends that you see. And then mm -hmm. that's where we are right now. Very quick, though. We do got some whole milk. But it's not... Lactate. Normal milk, right? It's lactate. Are you my lactose mother, intolerant? My mother is. Okay. And so like, she'll buy normal milk. And I'm like, why waste money on getting both? Like, We just literally get two lactates, and I'm okay with drinking the lactate. Oh, so you're just fine with lactate? Yeah. And honestly, the lactate protein milk, I highly recommend it for anyone really? who's cutting. Yes. Because okay. you get the you get the less than 2% fat. You also get the protein milk, so you basically get 30 grams of protein per serving. And you can use it for your protein shakes. You can use it... If you're having like a cheat and you want some cereal, but you want to be a bit cleaner, if you're having your coffees, this is my yeah. Not me. It's uh, it's Fruity Pebbles, bro. Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, I rocks all of them, bro. But Fruity my Pebbles, my top three cereal in general. My man. top three. Top three. Let's hear it. Fruity Pebbles, CT Crunch, and oh yeah, Frosted Flakes has to be top three for me. That's a valid list. I can't even hear on any of those, bro. But CTC number one, bro. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon Toast Crunch for life. Number two, I really love my Reese's Puff peanut butter chocolate flavor. Um, and then third, I want to say Cocoa Pebbles or Cocoa Krispies, depending on what kind mm -hmm. of mood in, I, whether it's not the elephant or the weird elves, or it could be Fruit Loops. But those, you know, that's going to be my top four right there. If you were asking me as a kid, I would have said Lucky Charms, but like now it's nah, just too much. Bro, now Lucky too Charms, much. Lucky Charms is gross because I don't want marshmallows inside my freaking cereal. Yo, Tricks bro. though? Silly rabbit? Nah. Tricks are for kids? No, I, I was a Tricks kid growing really? up. Really? Nah. Tricks it is... I would never put that top anything, you know? I yeah. would eat it if someone offered it to me, but I'd never go to the store and be like, man, I need a box but of I feel like I feel like it's like an honorable mention, though. I feel like it, it, it can come. No, you're Not even honorable mention, bro. For me, I feel like for me, it's honorable mention. Because me, I couldn't eat a lot of chocolate or uh, peanut butter-based uh, uh, cereals. So you, don't, you couldn't even were, enjoy were, Reese's. Were, yeah, because they were manufactured ah, in the same places as like a peanut butter. Damn. By the way, I, I, have, I have a second part to that fridge as a pure freezer. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's too much there for you to break down. Okay. Guys, we're, we're, we're going to have to do another. Season three, we'll bring back Artie to explore the rest <laughs> of like, this fucking video. Basically, bridge. that is just an extension of the other thing that okay. we'll show later. It, that's what it is, basically. It's just whatever we're not, like, whoever we're using now, we just bring up from the other one. Okay. That's the best way to explain So this picture does have bread in it, right? Is this frozen bread? No. It's oh, this refrigerated. is refrigerated. Okay. Because, like, so I explain this to people. When you refrigerate your bread... Um, it does preserve it a lot better. Oh, my bread is but, going in the fridge but, but ten times. Don't, time. but don't overbuy, because nah. yes, it slows down it um, getting stale, mm -hmm. but it still gets stale. Yeah. So like, I'll get two loaves from like wherever whoever has the best deals. That's right, no free promo here. Um, <laughs> whoever has the best <laughs> Duncan, um, <laughs> whoever has the best deals. That's where I'll go. I'll get two, and that's it. Or if I see a deal where I can get three potato buns, I, I don't care if I'm cutting, if I'm having a burger, it's potato buns. Sorry, not Potato sorry. buns, bro. Um, if I see a deal like that where I can get them for dirt cheap in comparison to usual, I will buy three packs and I will use them like vigorously, no problem. I will take on the calories. I okay. Care. My thing is, so you have a bunch of the, not a bunch, but you have a good amount of potato rolls, uh, buns and stuff and all that stuff, right? Have you ever thought of just putting them in the freezer? 
Mm, I've thought about that's it. that's what I've my, been doing. My biggest concern with bread, it can easily get freezer burn. Mm. That's the problem. So I never okay. want to risk, because I'd much rather just have uh, the bread more often than risk it getting freezer burn. There's only certain There's only certain breads I'll freeze, which I'll explain in a bit once you see the other thing. I don't want to spoil it. Yet. Oh, okay. But okay. There's, more, there's, there's more to the story. Cool, cool, cool. But I will say most of that bread because we do have people over nonstop. Like gotcha. my house is very much the people pull up type house. So everybody's yeah. coming through, yeah. getting a nice meal. I respect it. Uh, but I've been putting because obviously sometimes you go to BJ's or Costco, right? And you have yes. to get the two packs of bread, right? Yeah. So normally I'll take the one, put it in the fridge because I can't just leave it out, especially in the summertime. Like that, that's just going bad, bro. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's not gonna last. So I put the other giant loaf of multi-grain bread and put it in the freezer mm-hmm. and then by the time i'm done with this bread it shouldn't have freezer burn because it's only been probably like a week for me to get through that's a week and a half to me, get through it, it. it takes me like two weeks to go through a loaf of bread oh uh, i just every morning i'm pretty much having bread yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah it's life. like it's not sparingly but it's like i do try to like mix up my meals so i don't get tired of stuff that's valid. That, that's why i'm very big i'm not getting tired of food I can never get tired of food. All right, so we got a bag of potatoes here. And so that's the cheese and the potatoes. So we Oh, that's do, cheese. So you see the cheese on uh, the bottom. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I was telling you about the kachkaval gotcha. in a different language. Kachkaval? Yeah, kachkaval, yeah. Look at me. And there's something called petskavitsa kachkaval, where it's basically a burger. Mm-hmm. And when you say burger in Albania, it's petskavitsa. And in, inside the burger is the kachkaval. Oh, so it's stuffed. Yeah, it's, gotcha. it's basically a stuffed cheese. We're basically like the originals for stuffed cheeseburgers. Just to, just to throw that out there. Mm-hmm. The village has been doing it for centuries. <laughs> Shout no out doubt. to the village, bro. The villagers just know how to eat. So for you guys' burgers, though, is it normal buns or is it like in a pita pocket or something? Uh, Actually, a Turkish bread. I don't know if you know Turkish what Turkish bread, bread looks like. If You, you can Google Let's it. Let's Google you Turkish bread right so here, like, guys. There's, there's Turkish pita bread Turkish. and it's P-I-D-E, not pita. Oh. Turkish. Turkish bread. <laughs> Let's see, guys. This is in-depth research here together. Um, um, hmm. you gotta, I gotta look up Turkish pita. P i d. Pita. No, p i. P i d. P i d. Yeah, p i. P i d. Yeah, Turkish pita bread. And hmm. then it's basically something like that. Here we go. It's this. This one. It's this. Ah, oh, okay. Thinner. Yeah. So we're gonna save it so you guys can see the picture. <laughs> Save energy to downloads. I love that yeah. feature. Shout it, out to the Mac. There, and there's different ones where they're sort of like the same but different. But that's generally what it is. And they're huge. So they'll cut it into like halves. Mm-hmm. And what they'll do is they'll either open it up and stuff it with like two. Or they'll just like dice them up and throw them in. Nice. You know what? That actually sounds good. Yeah. And it makes sense here. And that right there mm. is an Albanian staple. Every household Ooh, has it. Albanian sausage. Tell me about it. It is called sejuk. Sajuk. And that is a staple that you can have in the morning. Just you dice it up, throw it in the pan, and eat it straight up. You put it in any of your dishes. So it's uh, like Albanian culture does have a lot of like stew based dishes. So we have like grosh, which is like a bean stew. You could either use like whole chunks of meat from like a lamb or a cow, or what we do in my family a lot, we throw chunks of sajuk in there. Mm. And you get all that flavor because sajuk can either be just a base meat. It can be spicy, you know. It can, it has a whole range. So for there's it. multiple type of flavors. So. Yeah, so it's basically like like sweet, like just normal meat, mm-hmm. mild or slight spice, and there's ones where it's like really, really spicy. Gotcha. And I've had the really, really spicy ones from um, from uh, Shkup, like Shkup Macedonia, or I've had the ones from uh, Kosovo or uh, Kosovo for anyone who doesn't know what that is. Um, technically it's Albania, but it's not, but it is besides the point. Geography. Um, yeah, geography. <laughs> um, and I, and those are hot, but the taste you get, like it's worth the suffering. Like that's really? the best spice. Like I'll suffer, but if it's phenomenal taste, I'll take it in a heartbeat without a doubt. <sighs> I don't know, bro. I don't know. That sounds painful for my yeah. guts, bro. Yeah. And uh, then again, the onions I hate, but they're, they're they, they are down. there. They are and important. Everybody. This is a juke. We get, we order it from, um, I want to say Ohio. Really? Yeah. So there's this Albanian people who have like a uh, a meat business basically, and okay. we order it from there, and it's absolutely like spectacular, like because no one makes it as good anymore. And the other thing that's a meat that a lot of Albanians will talk about, mm. and I think most people who talk about the Balkans will know about this, is called chabops, or as Kian people people mispronounce it, called it chabapi. Chibapi. It's not chabapi. <laughs> it's chabops. Chibops. Right. Chibops. And that is basically, um, it's basically like, uh, you know, the breakfast sausages. It's mm-hmm. the size of those, but the taste is out of this world. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Very quick though for for these guys right here. What mm-hmm. is it called again? Uh, Sajuk. Sajuk. For Sajuk, right? Mm-hmm. What is the flavor profile? I know you said it could be mild, sweet, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Is it similar to like an Italian sausage, a chorizo? Um, I've, I see. I never tried this. It was all pork. Oh, that's right. As a as Damn. A, as a, as You're a, right. As I a man that. of Islam that mm-hmm. I am, I don't know how chorizo or uh, Italian sausage tastes like. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam. All right. We'll move on here, though. We, we got some water on deck. Yeah. So, again, that's for when we have guests come over, <laughs> hand out the waters, because... Because a lot of our guests, they like to hang- So this is our in our garage, by the way. Okay. Our garage, we have to be turned into a hangout. We have like a 75-inch TV, a Ooh. couch, a swinging chair, a, 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 a bar we got. Well, no, the 75-inch TV, this is a story. We got it from Walmart. For, Hell yeah. For 67 I could have given you like a 10% 60, discount, well, No, I, I got it for sixty seven ninety nine dollars instead of paying $450 for it. Excuse me? Because <laughs> it's one of those on TVs, the smart uh, TVs. okay. And for some reason, like, there was some glitch in like your OPU system. Where it was for selling $67? them. For $67? Yes, for sixty seven ninety nine. No way. Yeah, way. And, and you we just saw got like the Roku linked up to it and you're, and you're chilling now? It's, it's pre-built into it for oh, on TVs, shit. don't forget. So they have pre-built Roku. Damn. Yeah. 75 or... It doesn't even matter. It's an on TV. Whatever. It's still 75 It's a inches. smart TV for 75 It's That's it's, a win, yeah, bro. It's, That's a win. it's 4K, yeah. 1080p, whatever yeah. it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not UHD, but it's 4K. It's okay. We'll take it. We'll take for $67, bro? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Give me 720p, bro. I'll take it. I know exactly. Golly, but interesting about water bottles like that, though, mm-hmm. is do you have like, is there a certain water bottle where you look at it and you're like, damn, bro, I can't drink this? Oh, Dasani. Dasani's the one I really? will never drink. Okay. I hate it. I hate it with dying passion. Like, Dasani, mm-hmm. sue me for defamation. I don't care. I despise you. Dasani, come for his ass, bro. Seriously. I, to me though, like this is Wesley Farms, that's from BJ's. Yeah, but usually yeah, BJ's and Costco. Yeah, we get both. It just depends because weeks they fluctuate now because Costco is not as consistent as they used to be. Costco it used to be two dollars and fifty cents for a forty pack, mm-hmm. and now they've like fluctuated their prices with it. And if it's cheaper at BJ's that week, we'll just get it from BJ's. Damn. Yeah. Okay. I see you there. We got some other other things that we probably already discussed here on on the on the show. Now we're in the freezer though. Yeah. We in so, the freezer. I see some veggie burgers here. We'll start out with that. My mom. Your mom? Okay. So you're not a veggie burger guy. Yeah. She's a very like, much like a veggie gal. Like she loves, um, she prefers like like mushrooms and like peppers oh, over like meats and stuff. Bro. And what you see right there, that's filet mignon, by the way. Filet mignon. Yeah. Okay. You fancy, huh? No, because my grandfather, so the reason why my, my mother's side of the family was able to make it to the States because he was one of the first few people overseas who were able to... Get like a degree and certifications and being like a butcher and running like so butcher shops in Albania are called mistores, where they're basically meat shops where you you'll see the skinned hanging lamb in the window, you know, mm-hmm. like stuff like that. And my grandfather came over here and he opened up a place in Paris and on Main Street. He had it for what oh, Main since Street too. <laughs> yeah, since like I want to say seventy eight or something, maybe maybe the eighties. I want to guess. I'm not too sure about it. Don't quote me on it. Um, if he's wrong, guys, come for his ass. No, yeah. So leave, anyway, leave anyways, negative comments. He was everybody. there for a very long time. He sold it in like the late to early two thousands. I think right before the recession hit. I'm not gonna lie. Like he got great time to get it. out. There. I know. Um, and basically, that was like the spot that every Albanian would go to to get your sujuks, to get your chabops, um, any meats you'd want. They would like go to him. He was the hookup. He used to be the guy, and like he has all these recipes that's like. I have them, and I've been trying to perfect how he made them because it's not just what you put into it. It's how you make it. Mm-hmm. Because I think that container is chabops. That container is chabops. Damn. Um, and then we also have stuff called pit. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what you see in the uh, blue bags here. So pit, um, Aldi makes them now, which is really? insane. Yeah, Aldi and uh, Lidl. Well, Aldi's got some weird, obscure, not weird, but like random items from a bunch of other. No, they're weird. Like no, let's not lie. They are okay. weird. Okay. Okay. Aldi's uh, is weird. But uh, so, but what, what pit is, is basically a puff pastry. Okay. And you can either put cheese, meat, or uh, spinach and cheese, or mid chip, which is onions you'd probably love. Um, and my favorite, my absolute favorite is pet megroche which is a bean stew. Mm-hmm. So they basically take the bean stew when it's like a day old and they sprinkle it like around the like puff pastry part, put the top and let it cook in the oven. And Ooh, that sounds fire. Out of this world. Out of this world. Y'all heard it here first, bro. That actually sounds fire, bro. Yeah. 
I love me anything like puff pastry fried, fried or any or baked in the oven like that. Mm. It's always hitting, bro. Always. So we're gonna move on here though. That is an absurd amount of butter. Man. <laughs> no, so uh, listen, that you need to. Who in what <laughs> point in time, bro? Uh, Restaurant Depot. Just we get them cheap and we buy them for like months on end that we just have. How long does butter last? Like you went to Restaurant Depot, right? You buy yeah. it. How big is the pack of this butter? It's like how a, many blocks are you getting here? Um, let me see. Hold on. One, two, three, four of that brand. Four, okay. And then so that usually those four, eight, like sixteen blocks in one bag and one box. Okay. And, and again, they last that long? Are they, you going they, they, through a lot of butter or not? Um, yes and no. Uh, here's because we also we also get the uns- it's all it's all unsalted butter mm-hmm. just to clarify because it's hard to find good all unsalted butter for cheap. And unsalted butter is good for a lot of healthy cooking as well because if you're using salted butter, there's a lot of sodium in there and it could ruin your cholesterol and things like that. So we get the unsalted butter when we can. Hey, bro, I'm, I'm not trying to live for a long time. <laughs> I mean, for a good time. Okay? Yeah, but I still, Give me make, the salted I still butter. <laughs> make good food, bro, plain and simple. I think the one thing you're skipping over, you don't see a lot of it. Hmm. We have a lot of hash browns. We're a big hash brown family. You... That many hash browns? Dude. I mean, I saw it in the other freezer, but I thought it was, it was like one. So I was like, oh, no, you know, everyone's got numerous, one hash brown. No, we have numerous packs. Where did of that hash come browns. from? Is that a village thing? A no, country it's thing? just like, or dude, that's a so, family no, thing? no. So honestly, I am taking credit for this one. So when we were younger, <laughs> we used to always get like turkey bacon and cheese or a pastrami sandwich. Yeah. And I was like, why don't you get a hash brown on the sandwich? Mm. And we got hash browns on the sandwich? You just be throwing hash browns and everything, huh? And I'll change my life. Now, I like if I don't want rice, I'll just have hash browns and chicken. That's literally what it is. Hash browns and chicken? And then that's it. That's all I eat for the night. Like You really rocks with hash browns? Bro, huh? I mess with hash browns because it's just potatoes. Do you it? dip them in anything, though? Or is it just raw hash browns? It's just like... Cook, no ketchup? Cooked in the air fryer hash browns. I swear, if you say you don't like ketchup, I'm a super... Kid. No, I love ketchup. Okay. Don't you okay. dare give me anything else that isn't Heinz, Thank bro. Because Hunt's is way too sweet. It's weird. Bro, if it's... Red and it's liquidy. I'm drinking it, bro. Take that as you will. <laughs> <laughs> if it's red and it's liquidy, yeah. Hey, I, I'm a dog out here, guys. Uh, but truthfully, I rocks with ketchup, banana yeah. ketchup, Heinz ketchup. You ever had banana ketchup? No. Find you a Filipino person, banana ketchup. I grew up with a lot of Filipino kids. So I'm and you never found any like banana ketchup? Nah. Well, I mean, we'll have to get on a trip. You might not like it though because it is very sweet. So maybe, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not so like not even. Gonna I'm bother. very much savory <laughs> over sweet. Mm. I'm very much a savory guy. This is the problem I have with my girlfriend. She gets very frustrated about it because she's very much a sweet over savory. Mm. Like she'll get full fast, but she says I have a dessert stomach, which makes no sense to me. Okay, how do you have a dessert? Like I don't get it. Interesting. All right, so I think oftentimes though, that is like a challenge within relationships, right? Like for me, hold on a second. Moment of silence. (laughs) Moment of silence. silence. Hold on. Okay. Uh, For me, it was like a the clash that it was was she was a super salty person yeah and i was like um your girlfriend where i, I really like sweets and savory um so sometimes i would make something and then she would add salt into it i'm like damn bro that's well that's kind of messed up for me it's not adding salt it's more of like adding like a pepper or mm. something like i like my spice on the savory side not like the saltiness of the savory side you know i will say though it did help me out though because i then realized I need to start putting a little more salt into some things. And yes. actually, as I like started cooking more and using more salt, things started to taste better. So I can't just like hate on it, bro. Because I the, appreciate the, it. The thing is, like, so when I make pasta, for example, in your pasta water, so what I do, I put light olive oil in my pasta water. And then you got to drop the amount of salt in there like as if it's a sea, bro. Like, make really? it like, yeah. Because realistically, it's like, it helps with getting rid of like that starch and the coatings on the pastas because then... You save some of that, and it helps with the actual sauce itself. Mm-hmm. So then you don't have to oversalt your sauce. Okay. All right. Speaking of um, crazy things, right? I love me some glizzies, bro. I don't like glizzies. You those, don't like glizzies at all. People bro? come over. I'm telling you, like. But you got family, like the best brand of glizzies, bro. Sabrets. So yeah, dude. But yeah, well, we don't mess about. It's either good or not good. Like, we, <laughs> but this is all beef. This is all beef right here. Well, yeah, all beef. We don't get the uh, the pork ones or anything. Damn. And we always have to double check. If stuff is in sheep's casing or not. Uh, a lot of stuff will say it's beef or chicken, but it's in pork casing. So we always have to watch out. Is that like a huge hassle uh, when you go out to eat, having to find... Um... Well, no, going out to eat, it's like, look, you're not going to find every place that's halal. And I think that's up to each individual Muslim. Like, don't get me wrong. I have my halal Chinese spot that I only mm-hmm. go to. I don't get Chinese anywhere else. 
Unless it was like on campus and we had a, uh, what's it called? Panda? Panda Express. Yeah. Like that one, you see where they're cooking it. You know it's cleaner and like, you know, it's fine. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I have my halal Chinese. I get my platters, bro. You know, tasty platters. I just got it the other day. Really? I might have to try it today, guys. It might be a honey garlic vlog adventure. So here. you know how I love the Ming habanero, but mm -hmm. the honey garlic wings. Bro. Honey garlic wings? Guys, I might do it today. We might stay tuned for a nice little food and adventure. I, I get my mixed platter with the with the with the gyro and the chicken. Okay. Oh my god. Fire? Listen, this is gonna be the teaser. This video is gonna come out afterwards. It's gonna be me trying tasty platters, and then we'll see if Artie's really the food. So guy. here's the thing: I the problem is that there's tasty platters that's really good. There's kebab paradise that's really good, kebab and there's paradise. juicy platters that's really good. Okay, I feel like I know where. Where's kebab paradise? Kebab paradise. There's one in Lake Hiawatha. The good one. Mm -hmm. I will clarify. The good one's okay. Lake Hiawatha. The bad one's Route Ten. So if you're living around ah, Rockaway, see, Randolph, Route 10, I was going to be like, I know exactly where that is. No, do not that go to not Route 10 one. Go to the one in Lake Hiawatha Damn. by Parsippany. Yes. Crazy. All right. Uh, we got some other things in this freezer. We will mainly focus on ground chicken. You a big ground meat kind of guy? Yes. I love it because then you can make your own like tacos and like if you do ground turkey and then you do a little bit of like the the packet seasoning for tacos like mm -hmm. the taco seasoning i know it's like shameful you could do the spices yourself but when you're in a pinch and you make it quick just use that and you're fine i know i'm sorry I, i'm disrespecting you trust me i have all the spices you you're saying <laughs> i've only shown you my fridge you haven't seen my pantries yeah. my pantries are double the sizes of my fridges like hey I hope bro you know this. stay tuned season two <laughs> He'll come back. We're, we're going to explore the, the rest. Alone. <laughs> the pantry episode. No, because I have every spice you can even dream of. Like, it's absolutely insane. Do um, you have Chinese five spice? Yes. All right, that was my... <laughs> that was my, that was my blazing gun. Out of the pocket. <laughs> no, but like chili powder, hot paprika, paprika. Uh, we have cayenne pepper, uh, dried garlic, minced garlic flakes. Like He's got it all, bro. A whole white pepper. And he's still whole using line. the Tony old Sanctuary. El Paso seasoning no, dude, packet, bro. Dude, no, you, you have I, it in the, in the no, cabinet. No, I told you. When I'm in a pinch and I need to cook quick, I uh, use it. Bro. But if it's the day off, I can relax. I'll do it all properly. Because uh -huh. guess I'm not going to lie to you. It's the same. It's 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 the, it's the fucking same. I'm sorry. It really it is. is. It's like, oh, the KFC 11 original spices. It's the same shit. Like, You're right. You're right. You're right. I hate to say it. Like, Someone had to say it. Though. I had to say it. But listen, it is different in the sense that it, I think for that type of style, like those are to me very American yeah. tacos, right? Mm -hmm. And you can easily do that with like your spice cabin. But if you're talking like authentic Mexican tacos or something, I think there is a little bit more nuance into what well, you're with in those. There. I think it's because you have to char the peppers. Mm hmm. Clean them of the charring and then dry them and dice them yep. and then actually do the whole process of making the pure It's like powder. a whole day event, bro. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I'll do that if I have to. I mm -hmm. love, like, making food from scratch. But, like I said, if I'm in a pinch, I'm sorry. I'm grabbing the We all do it, bro. Listen, everyone's got their food things. We just, like, I, I needed something quick. For me, spam, eggs, rice, call it You want to know bro. what's underrated for a spice? Tony Sachery's, the Creole seasoning. I've never had that. Tony Sachery's, I'm Leslie's like, oh, it's spicy. Salt. My girlfriend says it's spicy salt. And I'm like, you're <laughs> you're this close to getting dumped. Like, you like it? Be, tread lightly. We're tread not... lightly. What are you talking about with Tony Sachery's? For a second in that little dialogue, Artie looked at his girl and was like, this this might not work out right now. <laughs> this with my it wasn't it wasn't because she wasn't Albanian or she wasn't no. Muslim. It was because she didn't mess with Tony. Drew Sachery's. the line on this one specific <laughs> seasoning that he's gonna use maybe twice a year or something. No, I use, use it, it all the time. I use it for my grilled chicken actually. I like oh, okay. I like doing uh, black pepper, garlic powder, and Tony Sachery's. I, I think it brings cool. a different level of like spice when it comes to grilling. 100. For, for me, with my grilled chicken, and then we'll talk about this chaos of a freezer right now to close out here <laughs> and then we'll get into some off topic stuff uh, but for me my grilled chicken super just um adobo sazon because i'm puerto rican bro and then salt pepper and then we have this thing called sofrito right where it's mm -hmm. like cilantro onions garlic peppers all blended together and then you like soak it and then put a little bit of vinegar in there then you could put like lime juice or something you feel in some mm -hmm. little fancy then you just let it marinate for like However long you feel like marinating, and then you just put it on the grill. It's like my pfft. my thing is, do you use adobo peppers at all? Adobo peppers, not really, because they're spicy. I love adobo peppers. Cause well, it depends. Like if I'm making Mexican food, right? Yeah. Then I'll put that as like a can of like the adobo pepper thing. Because what I'll do is I'll because it's like a great good smoky no, taste. So what I'll do, I'll do the adobo peppers, your typical like you know red pepper and stuff like that, onions, uh, shallots and stuff like that. 
and I'll blend it and purify it in like a food processor or a blender. And then I'll mix that in with the Greek yogurt, the non flavor one. Fire, wine, yeah. Make it as a marinade, mm-hmm. and it just hits different, dude. Greek yogurt, y'all. It's a great You sleep resource, on it. Bro. It's good with protein, exactly. good for marinating. Yep. You got to use it. You it's use so it. versatile, bro. So versatile. All right. We, we'll close your fridge exploration with your freezer part oh, because yeah. good Lord. Yeah. I know you said Gramps was, was the meats guy. And you weren't lying because it, clearly that has gone down from generation to generation. hundred ten percent. Because this freezer, I've never seen so much meat in my life. And I've been mm-hmm. in some interesting places. Also, more pit. You're missing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> all the blue packets, literally all that's the That's crazy. All right. So explain yeah. the chaos here so for look, everyone that's looking at so this. Wonder what's going the on. The top is chicken. The middle is beef. The bottom is like fish slash assorted stuff. Okay. Now, we've been taught, my grandfather, he's worked at Stop and Shop and all these spots. He'll tell us if you find it at this certain price. Excuse me, sorry. Buy it in bulk, freeze it, save it. Because mm-hmm. when you freeze meat, it doesn't really go bad after a certain amount of time. So long as it's within a six to eight month rotation, you're fine. Yeah. And like we'll find filet mignons for really, really cheap. We'll find like these nice hanger steaks for cheap, stuff like that. Um, and even chickens. Like, dude, chicken has gotten really expensive. So when there's a deal on it, we buy it in bulk, or what we we'll do? Especially chicken breast, bro. What we'll do because we're running low on it. You don't really see it, but we hold on. You're running low on what, sir? <laughs> so this our, freezer's full. Our, our chicken breast and thighs. Okay. We buy from Restaurant Depot. We get the halal ones because we think you get made more bang for your buck with how thick they are. Sure. And we'll slice and prep all of our own chicken. Put it in the in the fruit the food processor bags and the seal locks. And we'll throw it in the freezer, and we take them out, defrost, throw them on the grill, use them for whatever. And me, I prefer a thigh over a breast. Oh, for Personally, sure, Personally, yeah. chicken thighs, I think, mm-hmm. are... So much more juicy. Yeah, 110%. Everything. everything. Yeah. Everything. But I think both still serve a purpose. So. Absolutely. Like, if you're doing just a stir-fry, bro, chicken breast is totally cool, man. Just like... I really hope my mother doesn't see this, but I hate when she makes the chicken legs sometimes. Because she throws them in the freezer. I mean, in the in the oven. She just oven roasts them. She doesn't do anything else. And I think, personally, hear me out, (laughs) you either sear on a pan and then put in the oven, or you cook it on the grill and then oven. And here's why. If you cook it just in the oven only, don't get me wrong, you season it, great flavors, the chicken is just really gamey. Mm. Like, it's a weird chew on it, and that's why I don't like. Like, I like my chicken, like, like, to have, like, a nice good bite on it and not, like, too chewy or gamey. That's the big thing for me. And I explain that, she's like, ah, whatever, I'm like, okay, sure. I think with anything, I think the best flavor profile when you're cooking any type of meats is when it's on a grill. Because mm-hmm. you can't replicate that char flavor from anywhere else, bro. Nope. That char flavor is just like, it's different. I do have to say, if you're in a pinch, air fryer does wonders. No, air fryer, bro. Chicken legs Don't inside get me wrong. of air fryer. I used fire, to be anti air fryer. Same. For a long I was time. like, these people no, are stupid. No, no, because no, I thought like this is disrespectful. You're just having like crappy food. Mm-hmm. Like what? Because especially when they when they first first came out, my grandma got one. I'm like, does they even like cook the French fries you put in there? Like how the hell are you supposed to cook it? Now, bro, these air Plug fryers. Plug that shit in, bro. Plug it bro, in. Bro, I toss in some salmon. I put like olive oil, pepper. Garlic powder and then also mm-hmm. minced garlic, bro. That comes out beautifully, like that, bro. Man. Makes no sense how it cooks it. I don't get how I the don't convection oven works. No, my thing is this, man. I hated the the air fryer for so long. I was passionate about it. Mm-hmm. My my lady, former lady, was like, "I love my air fryer." I was like, "What are you talking about, bro? It's useless. Use your oven. You have an oven." Then I bought an air fryer for my mom. It's just so convenient, bro. And then I used it. I was like, so why was I wasting so much energy being a hater? I know. It's it gets the job done. I mean, what did it it's such a me great off texture. How much of a hater I was. I, bro. For real, I sat there in defeat after I dude, had chicken legs in if, there, bro. If you if you want, like, if you still want your chicken cutlets, you can literally make them in the air fryer and it's ten times healthier than frying That's, chicken cutlets. It's you don't insane. like you don't even need to be frying that many things. Now there's certain things though, you still, in my opinion, need to fry like empanadas, bro. What's your list? Empanadas you hundred percent still need to fry. Yes, I agree. If you're making like KFC style, Popeye style fried chicken, that still needs to be fried. Everything mm-hmm. else, I think you can make a valid case just throw it in the air fryer. No, 100%. Even especially stuff that you get from the freezer aisle. 
Oh, hundred percent. No need to put it in like, the fryer. Yeah, at all. I used to always be like, oh, like what's the microwave friendly stuff? Now it's just like, oh, what's air fryer friendly? Boom, yeah, throw it just in throw it in the air yeah. fryer, bro. It's so convenient, so easy. And the thing is, for certain things like say you like chicken tenders or chicken nuggets, whatever, mm-hmm. you could put it in an actual oil fryer, right? But then you get left feeling like, ugh, kind of have that weird. Kind Whereas of like in the air feeling. fryer, it's air like, fryer, it's not as greasy. No, know? it takes all the I grease out and you're chilling. I do hate myself sometimes having like you know the healthier tenders because I love making my own chicken tenders or my own mm-hmm. like I make my own chicken nuggets sometimes. That's valid. And like I make them like spicy or like tangy or however people prefer. It. And oh my god, like there's a reason I say this every time. The reason why I'm fat, bro. I just love to make <laughs> food, dude. It's just insane. All right, so we explored your freezers, bro. We got through it. A hell of an adventure. Before we get into some overrated, underrated things, best fast food chicken nugget. Cause you're a chicken nugget guy, and I gotta know. And we'll throw like Chick Fil A counts. I don't know if Popeyes. I think, Popeyes I think, think Chick Fil A is overrated. Me too. I think Popeyes is better than Chick Fil A. Facts, bro. Thankful. Okay. My thing about Chick Fil A, bro. I don't. The, the there's like is, a, I've converted so many people on this idea because always like, oh, well, I'm gonna go to Popeyes. Blah blah blah. I'm like, here's the coupons that we get in the mail from Popeyes. Go get your three piece nugget and your thing, or whatever, and you get it for like five bucks. Eat it, and then come back to me. Nah, bro. Fuck the coupons. Fuck the apps, bro. Popeyes, I will pay extra money compared nah. to... I will donate to charity for Popeyes, Did, did you not just see what I go through to make sure I save money in my freezer? <laughs> nah, bro. <laughs> you think I'm not going to use my coupon? Get out of here, bro. Nah, bro. But you for might... real, for fact, like, Chick-fil-A oh, is the most overrated fast food place I've ever seen. Especially when you look I, at the I've lines of people it, waiting I've for it. I've had it three times. I've had it twice, and I don't need to go back. Nah, I've never I, once I, craved Chick-fil-A. I've had it, I had it in 2017. I had it in 2019, and I had it in 2022. Those are the three times I've ever really had it. And you don't really, like, do you ever crave it? Well, because the thing is, like, we live in Jersey, bro. Like, Jersey is the most food-diverse state in the country. country. And people can disagree with me, but tell me a state that has more diversity in food than us. Like, we have everything under the sun and a whole bunch of mom and pops that are better than a whole bunch of mom and pops in, like, the NYC, NPA. Even if we're talking about Cali, we have... Bro, like literally, so like in this town, actually, there's a place called Kenko Sushi, ranked number two in the nation for sushi, dude. Number two in the nation. And that's like in comparison to only a place in Cali and where it's like, of course, they're by the uh, Pacific Ocean yeah. and they have all that imports and mm-hmm. stuff. It's like. I will say, I think Cali could probably come close when it comes to food scene. I think. Yeah. I think the special thing about where New Jersey is, is obviously we are close to New York, mm-hmm. but it is literally such a mixing pot from just look at history, right? We legit have anything that you want because you have great indian food Mm -hmm. you have great any type of spanish food whether it's like puerto rican colombian uh costa rican all like literally every single part of central america south america yeah they have a food spot here and then even when it comes to europe literally every small tiny nation has its own type of place here yeah everyone's got their own pockets in jersey bro and that's why um despite being so small it's a lot of good things to have here I know sometimes it's easy to hate on New Jersey. Even I do it. But there is an appreciation of how much, like, if you went to Oklahoma. Yeah. No offense to Oklahoma, but fuck Oklahoma, right? Uh, <laughs> fuck them. You know, they did nothing wrong to us. Fuck yeah. yeah, but fuck them. Uh, but when you think about them, you really just, what is their offering when it comes to just different types of cuisines? Because yeah. when you hear stories about people when they leave their state that oh, they're from, they they've barbecue. never had they certain got, things. They, they got but when you think of barbecue, do you think of Oklahoma? Because to me, when I think of barbecue, so Texas, guy, Oklahoma has Kansas though, City. Dude, but Oklahoma is still known nah, for its barbecue. Nah, we ain't doing that. You have to understand, that, anything that's like... Known for barbecue? They, no. no. Oklahoma has Oklahoma? nothing else. Oklahoma has nothing else to offer. Oklahoma... No, Oklahoma has legitimately nothing to offer. <laughs> no, it has <laughs> nothing. Listen, it has good barbecues. Because listen, <laughs> you understand, the Midwest and the South, like, I don't know what it is, like, the way how they use their smokers and how they do everything, it's just better dude it's just like you can have a smoker in jersey i don't know what they do in the south but like they just it's just their smokers are better maybe because they're more used i feel like a smoker is like a cast iron pan Mm -hmm. you have to use it a lot to get more of the flavor that's fair yeah so i feel like because they're so well enriched in that that region is strictly just barbecue all that stuff and like dude bar like don't get me wrong i can't have ribs and stuff like a good like beef Mm -hmm. brisket bro like you know what's i've never had beef brisket at all in my life all missing those barbecue out. flavors that they're known missing for, I've never out, had bro. It. Missing out. One day I'll travel. Uh, if I ever get that job that they keep offering me, hopefully one day I'll be able to travel. Uh, okay, we'll close out with some uh, some other topics here. We'll go through some quick overrated, underrated things. Mm-hmm. We start off. I already know the answer because this is absurd on so many levels. 
Overrated or underrated pickles? Despise them. Why? Explain overrated. it. Overrated. Go against pickles for me because it makes no taste. sense. Texture, taste, texture, taste. Really? Texture and taste. Yeah. What is up with you and crunchy things? So onions and pickles. No, but like, beef with. yeah, but like onions when cooked, very soggy, taste weird. That's why I hate onion rings. I love onion rings. I hate onion rings. It feels like I have some slurpy thing in the middle of some fried stuff. It's weird, bro. So <sighs> weird. I, I just I can't. Ice cream, overrated or underrated? I hate sweets, but I can eat some ice cream. Mm, so favorite like flavor? That's, um, you're going to make fun of me for this. Uh, mint Oreo. Mint Oreo? That's that's not even like a normal option, bro. Well, because I was spoiled. So like my, girlf- my, my girlfriend works at, like I think, genuinely like the best ice cream I've ever had. Like their shop. Does it say it on a sign? Number one. No, <laughs> no. Dude, like, they, they're they like very, really, they're, like really like, sort of, they don't brag about it. It's like, yeah, like, you know, we're, I'm going to say it's Mike's ice cream. It's a caucus. Okay. Um, and it's like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Like absolutely insane. Like I don't know how how they make it. I don't know what they do with it, but it is good. Okay, I respect that. I, you know, I can't even hate mint in general because I love mint chocolate chips. So oh, I thank God. I thought because that's my second favorite. Nah, for hundred percent love. No, mint because chip. people are like, oh, would you like the taste of a uh, of a uh, toothbrush? Uh, toothbrush? Yes, I'm like, I love mint. <laughs> like mint's good. Like, it's when you do refreshing, it with ice cream, bro. Like oh, man. it's just when you get that cold fillet. Oh, I love ice cream, bro. Yeah. Um, funny enough about ice cream, very quickly. Is I went to the shore once to some family, and they're claiming this ice cream spot down the shore. Greatest ice cream shore, ever. Shore, hot take. The shittiest food you'll have is down the shore. 100%. Unless, the Jersey Shore sucks unless ass. Unless it's cheese and beets. South Jersey in general, bro, we don't need them anymore. There's nothing that South Jersey can actually offer that enhances New Jersey. Fuck South Jersey. <laughs> um, but more specifically. Really? Um, when it comes to ice cream, though, so we're at this spot, hyped up. And I love ice cream, bro. Like, I, I freaking love well, ice cream. cream. You have to undersell it or else it's never going to be good. Exactly. I feel like that's what you have to do. But you know how I knew it was going to be just mid from the jump? Mm-hmm. It's like, you know how you have those ice cream containers? Yeah. And it's in those little containers, right? There's a Friendly's logo <sighs> inside the ice cream. Ooh. It's like, bro, we have this whole establishment here. Claiming to have the best ice cream ever. And it's just friendlies. friendlies. And they're not even called friendlies, bro. It was like Jason's ice cream or whatever, bro. Yeah. And I was like, this ain't it, man. No, so this Mike's, dude, like, they have, like, containers that they refill when they... Because they make their fr- ice cream fresh daily. Yeah, and that's when you know you have a good spot if it's exactly. fresh. Yeah. I think the best ice cream I've ever had, though, is um, in New York. And it was, like, gelato. So shout out to that place. I don't know yeah. where it's called, but... Uh, what do we next think of Rita's? I've been to Rita's a couple times... I'm I would gonna, never. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like a vanilla custard and like that Swedish fish ice. Mm-hmm. Like I don't mind it, but it's not like I don't go there a lot. Exactly. I've never been like I could really get some Ritas today. Sometimes yeah. though, I don't know. It's because like memories and shit. I think I could go for a Blizzard right now. You see the commercials. I I fuck with Blizzard. I bro. very rarely have had Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen Blizzards, bro. Get a small one because the, only, the large ones are. That's too much. Ice the only thing I know is that Way people just like hold them upside down. I I've never see. I was always afraid to. It's like yeah. I just want to eat my ice cream. I'm gonna uh, eat the whole tub, bro. That was just such a weird flex, mm-hmm. man. Why do you need to hold your cup up? I don't need down? to do that. I just uh, want to eat my yeah. ice cream, bro. Like, fuck that. All right, bagels. They are per. I feel like they're underrated. Like, people underrated? Don't understand, like unless you're from Jersey, people yeah. don't understand how great a bagel is. And I have the best bagel shop, by the way. Where? Put a promo right now. Uh, it's technically on the border of Pompton Lakes and Wayne. It's mm-hmm. called Bagel Loops, and they've been open since like 1982. Interesting. And this place. Every time, so like every time, I bring bagels from this place, and people are like, "Oh no, my best place is here. Oh no, my best place is there." Convert them all. Real? It's that good. Annabella Poland has even Annabella. Said, Annabella Poland has even said, "Wow, I'm sorry." She she, she apologized, apologized, bro. Miss Poland, if somehow you're watching this and you're this far into this, credit to you. But uh, and then shout also, to Jake gets okay. He was like. Oh, wait, wait, what? This has been five minutes away from my house this whole time? I didn't even Maybe know. Maybe sleeping on it, bro. Like, people don't know. I'm going to try I'm gonna try Tasty Platters today. It's going gonna, gonna to happen. But when it comes to bagels, I have this spot. There's two places next to where I live, right? Okay. And here's the interesting part. So it mm. used to be Bud Lake's Bagel and Deli. Okay. Which, uh, let, not, your girlfriend, I don't know if I have to say it or not. Um, She probably might know about it. Yeah. It's nearby and, and, where she And we've talked about this, and she's tried it, and she said it's better than that. She knows what's up. She knows what's up. No, but, no, no. She says, like, mine is better Oh, than for that. real? Yeah. Oh. Dude, and we might like, have to talk I, I told you, like, I've okay. converted okay. people. Okay, listen. But that place is really good, right? So mm-hmm. That used to be my go-to well, spot. what's your bagel, though? What's your go-to bagel? Uh, everything bagel, sausage, egg, and cheese on everything You're going to hate me. You don't like I, everything No, bagels? no, no. I love a whole wheat everything bagel. I feel like... No, a, that's, that's valid. No, because, dude, I feel like yeah. sometimes they just, like, 
I feel like they're they just come out better, like fluffier. I don't know how to explain it. It's mm. weird. You know what's the interesting thing for me and bagels though? Mm-hmm. Is sometimes places make their bagels too big. Yes. Like, I don't yes, want to yes, yes. go eat your bagel right and feel like I need to work out. I'm trying to think, seven like, miles. Is, is that like a good size? I feel like that's a like the that's as, fair. as a perimeter. It's not it's even the... perimeter that's the problem for me. Oh, it's the it's thickness. thickness. Yeah. Because sometimes when you go to a bagel spot, it's like this big. And I'm like, bro. I'm gonna eat the whole thing because that's how I've been raised. Like, how to <laughs> don't, finish don't your, waste food. your food. Don't exactly. waste your food. No, right? I think we're both you pay good money for no, the but I, I think like that, and then for thickness, I think that is perfect. I think you're teetering on borderline almost too much. Because I feel like th- there's people who make it that small. I think you're stupid. But I, I've seen people who make it that big. <laughs> that's I think the that, problem, bro. But that's ridiculous. I feel like yeah. that is the perfect size. Because mm-hmm. you don't want it to be like a chore when you're eating your food, bro. You want it something yeah. where it's going to leave you full, but it's like you still have to function through your day, right? The problem is like, I get a whole eat everything, but like I throw up turkey, bacon, cheese, hash browns. So it's oh, like, hash browns? <laughs> I'm like, what am I really accomplishing here getting the whole wheat? Yeah, Nothing. Yeah, but yeah. I, Nothing I, at all. I don't know. Strictly for better. flavor. Yeah. That's what you're it's going like, for. So this is a hot take. I like Coke Zero more than normal Coke. Round of applause, bro. <laughs> Hell yes! Okay, thank Coke God. Coke Zero's my shit! Thank God. Oh, bro, I love dude, Coke Zero. I don't Zero. know how to explain it. It's like normal Coke, it's just too sweet. Yes! It's yes. too sweet. It's way bro. too sweet. And, okay, so when I first met my girl, right, <laughs> hated Coke, absolutely despised it. I was, he's growing up, Mountain Dew, root beer guy. Oh, then, dude. Then, no, suddenly no, no. you hit so, an age, so the, boom, the, never they, again. When they do the, the Mountain Dew throwback, mm-hmm. where it's like the retro can, and they use the real sugar cane. That's the best Mountain Dew you'll have. See, that's probably the only one I can. I can't drink Mountain Dew anymore, bro. Really? I can't. It's too much. It's Baja too much. Blast, bro. I don't know. I can never nah. give it up. I can Mountain never give it up. Mountain Dew and root beer used to be my thing. Then suddenly, I, I was like, health-wise, I'm like, you know what? We're going to stop drinking soda, all that stuff. Put it to the side. And then eventually, I'm with her. And then I have a Coke, right? And I hated Coke. It's like, why would I settle for generic yeah. soda? Then I had it. And I was like... I love Coke. But then I was, I'm having trouble finishing it because it's so sweet. Exactly. Then I had a Coke Zero. And it's perfect. Changed my it's freaking just life, perfect, bro. dude. There's no guilt when you drink it. Mm-hmm. It's so much better tasting, I think. I, would, I, I tell people this all the time. I try to have the chemicals from the aspartame than like the, the diabetes yeah. or the sugar. <laughs> For real. Like, I'll take the risk on that. I don't care. No. Here's a hack, though. So you know how they have the Coke Freestyle machines? Uh, Yes. The Lime Coke Zero, bro. Yeah. It's my freaking cocaine, bro. Yes. Hell yeah. Every time, every time I, I get when I go out to the to the bars, I get a, a Jack and Diet double. Mm-hmm. I make sure there's lime in there. Hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent has to be with lime. But I love Coke Zero. It's the best. Anything, bro. 100%. Yeah, I agree. You know what I would do rock with, and then we'll do one more over underrated. Um, have you ever had Ollie Pops before? No. Ollie Pop, if you're listening to this, I'm a big supporter. You, I spend way too money, uh, way too much money what on Ollie Pops. But it's a prebiotic soda. Oh, So for okay. some people, they're going to be like, I don't want to do it. Um, but for me, it's so good. And the root beer one, because mm-hmm. once again, a sweetness thing. It's not so sweet. Yeah. But you get the flavor of root beer. And it's so freaking. Well, you're going to hate me. I hate root beer. I hate root beer. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I love how much of a roller coaster you're on. You're like, oh my god, oh my god. Just screw you. Like, oh I'm god. walking off set again. All right. So I'm going to do one no. more over underrated here. And we'll talk about it. I'm a big Dunkin' guy. Ride or die Dunkin'. And this is from a former Starbucks employee. Yeah. Had the freaking apron, which now my grandma owns. Because I will say, the apron from Starbucks when they give it to you, it's a tub, bro. That's a high quality apron, bro. But got the Dunkin' Donuts. Overrated or underrated, Artie? Overrated. I think it's just shit coffee. There's only two places you should be going that's like a fast food chain type coffee. And it's either Starbucks or you get a McDonald's coffee. Dude. Shut the fuck up. McDonald's bro. coffee. You cannot talk yes, about garbage coffee. Yes, I can. And then shit on Dunkin and say McDonald's. Dude, bro. I'm telling you right now. No. Just get a cup of regular McDonald's <sighs> coffee. And then get a, reg- get a cup of regular Dunkin' coffee. You can drink the McDonald's coffee straight. The Dunkin' just tastes nasty. You nah, have to put bro. stuff into it for nah, it to taste good. Can't do it. See, that also might be true, actually. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm saying. You have to put other Listen, stuff bro. in it for it to act like to taste good at all. If you're getting just black coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, you're a fucking freak. <laughs> you're <laughs> you are what? It is nowhere near good enough. Dunkin' to me, I think, is much... I know you hate their sauces, but it's the sauce thing no, from no, no, Buffalo no. Wild Wings. Not the, no, uh, I, I, I'm a big syrup guy, so I don't like sauces in yeah, Starbucks yeah. either. Mm-hmm. I don't give me the caramel drizzle. Give me the pumps. I yeah. think the pumps are where you get the true flavor if you yeah. want that. Like, basically, that's like a seasoning. 
for like a, exactly. A it's an enhancer, bro. Yeah, it's exactly. An enhancer. It's an enhancer. So to me, if you're getting a freaking Dunkin' Donuts run, it has to have either some type of cream in it. Not too crazy. It's got to be a nice brown. Like this is a little close to being too light for me. Yeah. But if you're getting a bunch of creamer, you're weird. Just drink milk, bro. Like stop Seriously. pretending like you like coffee. And then it only has to be two. Three is really pushing it when it comes to pumps. Like it can't be so many pumps. We're just tasting the sweetness. So mm-hmm. if you're getting Dunkin', it's got to have a little bit of sweet, a little bit of the cream. It can't be too much of it. But you can't just be getting black stuff from, from Dunkin' Donuts, bro. Like it's no, no. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Starbucks and McDonald's. Like, those are... <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No, right. dude. I'm telling you. Okay. We'll close out with one off-topic thing. Okay. I learned the other day, and I was scrolling through TikTok, yeah. as one does in their 20s these days, mm-hmm. and you're scrolling through TikTok, and you see, like, podcast clips. We're here doing a podcast mm-hmm. right now. Um, and there's this lady with this another girl, and she's saying how, for her, an ick is a when dudes walk around with big water bottles, bro. And I hate to break it to this lady, uh... but what the <laughs> fuck, man? Listen, man, I love... Carrying around water bottles strictly because I drink so much water. I'm drinking a gallon a day, yeah. guaranteed. It cleans mm. out my system. My pee is healthy, and not for nothing. If you want a boyfriend, you want some healthy movements from that area, right? Because yeah. if you're not drinking enough water, hate to break it to you, it's gonna smell like shit, okay? Mm-hmm. And it's not. We don't need to get into that part. Yeah. Um. But truthfully, water is so important, and, and it like, really helps you just I, I, run on the daily. I feel like people are gonna be like, "You're ready to smile." Like, no, this is like. I go through a gallon and a half a day. This is a gallon right here. That's valid. Everyone should be carrying something like that around. Because the thing is, like, I save money on having to buy water. Exactly. Save and, money. and plus, it's insulated. So, like, that water... Stays cold. Stays cold all day. Better for the environment. You're not mm-hmm. buying a bunch of water bottles, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. It's like, what does a woman want from you if just being healthy... Is an ick for that person. Hey, hey, my girlfriend does not mind it, so I think I'm in the clear. You're I, in the clear. I, I, I think there's a reason why some of these ladies are single. They just it's too they, many expectations. Too bro. many. Can't be six foot, or it's got to be six three. You got to have seven hundred thousand dollars income. Six three now? I don't know, bro. Bro, I'm six one. I thought I made the cut. <laughs> You're six one. Didn't you, you? You don't make the cut anymore, bro. I don't make the cut. That's crazy. I don't make the cut. Well, I, I gotta be an NBA <laughs> profiler now. Like, yeah, for I, real. I gotta be able to dunk, bro. You gotta have a double double in the NBA to, to get. Meanwhile, it's these five one, five foot girls saying this guy's. Though, really, yeah. they're four eleven. Mm-hmm. It's like the nerve, like the nerve. And then you could probably look at me. He's like, oh, maybe he's six foot. It's like you don't know that though. Maybe I'm five. Yo, I, I saw some. Yo, so like this was some out of pocket TikTok. So this girl was like, oh, like I have this like a line on my wall where she's measuring the dudes. And I was listening. So when the dude walks in, she'll see if they're six foot or not. And so then, and then some guy stitched it, and what he put under his <sighs> doormat was a scale. <laughs> I was like, valid, bro. Fight fire with fire, all right? I like that energy. Either way, that does it here for What's in the Fridge. It's been Isaiah. It's been your boy, Artie. Catch him on Match Week and shit. You can plug where to find it starting right now. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, we are on any uh, podcasting platform. We are everywhere and anywhere, whatever you prefer, whether you listen on iTunes, you listen on Spotify, you listen on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pandora, YouTube, you name it. We're everywhere. Um, new episodes coming out soon live streams every weekend for the premier league matches keep out for that and yeah appreciate your time thank you for tuning in hey guys that's my guy already former producer current right now producer of what's in the fridge and you know we we will be working in the future together as they say but keep a lookout for him for his uh, live stream and shit and uh catch up if you're still watching this credit to you but go ahead and subscribe leave a like leave a comment uh and tell some of your icks about people of the opposite gender either way um <laughs> trying to start a war i'm trying to start a war uh, a gender war everybody gender uh, war. all right guys peace out uh bye